Welcome back to another episode of Local Search Tuesdays. This week's video is another longer one because I'm sharing my entire presentation from an advanced level conference a few weeks ago. After I presented at PubCon in Miami, I hopped a few planes to Myrtle Beach where I presented a keynote session at the Unfair Advantage Mastermind Group, an advanced level automotive conference. This presentation is about 25 minutes long and it covers more advanced tips for local SEO. Check it out. Welcome to How to Be an SEO Jedi and Win on Google. For those of you that don't know, I'm a little bit obsessed with Star Wars, so of course, with a Star Wars-themed conference, I had to do a Star Wars-themed deck. And you guys know who I am, because clearly you're watching me here on this video, and I don't have to tell you to come watch the videos on the blog, which that's kind of the purpose of this slide. But also, if you're just watching this and don't know, I do speak at a lot of conferences, and sometimes you see some presenters that aren't really that great. And, you know, you get there and they just kind of read their own slides and the background of the slide is white and the font is aerial and it's just lots of bullet points that they read. So I firmly believe that bullet points kill kittens. So today's presentation will be entirely kitten safe. And then I always have a movie theme. So today's theme is sci-fi movies because I love movies and I love to talk about movies when I love talking about SEO. So there's always a theme. Today's theme is science fiction. Usually I only include one movie for every year in the last 50 years, but today we're going back 53 years because, hey, if we're doing sci-fi, we got to have all of the Planet of the Apes movies. So there are 82 total references today. And if it's something obscure you haven't seen, there is attribution over to the side. So you at least have a couple of cool new movies to watch along with all the awesome SEO knowledge you're gonna get today. So let's kick this off. Are you here because you need a hand with SEO? Are you spending too much time looking up at other dealerships that rank higher than you? SEO is a really tough puzzle to crack, especially when you're trying to show up well in one particular city or metro area. And unfortunately, you can't just float along with your website. You gotta put in effort because if you don't put in the effort to optimize well and show up in searches, your site's just going to blend into the background. And if you're going to blend into the background, you'll be virtually invisible to potential local customers. Now, I know SEO can get really confusing, and I don't want you to lose your head because I'm here today to help you dig through the giant pile of crap that's online that talks about how to get your site to show up better in searches. In fact, I'm going to show you the actual code behind Google's matrix so you'll understand the signals that really matter. Now, I've been helping car dealers with SEO for over 14 years. And I spent a lot of that time doing SEO for used car dealers. So this conference specifically being for a lot of used car dealers, it's important to understand that most of them don't do any SEO. Now, sure, I know there's some franchise guys that are here at this conference and they're also going to have a little bit better handle on SEO and probably be more invested in it. But with independence, it's important to understand that just a little bit of SEO work can help you really dominate search results and beat your competitors because most of them aren't doing SEO, but you can even beat the new car guys. If you look at everything that you do to gain more business and more customers, SEO is your most important marketing channel. It's going to be the biggest opportunity to bring in more people and get more leads so you can sell more cars. One thing I want to point out, you shouldn't be stressing out about how you rank how you rank doesn't tie into your bottom line. I could get you ranked for 100 phrases in one day, but it'd be 100 phrases that no human would ever search for. So it wouldn't help your dealership. If you really want to judge the success of your digital marketing efforts, you need to look at your traffic. Are you getting more organic traffic? And are you getting more leads? And are those leads resulting in more sales? And as a car dealer, you absolutely need local SEO. Local SEO attacks Google's local algorithm, which is a different algorithm. So any business that does face-to-face -face business with customers actually needs to be doing local SEO. And that local algorithm is more complex. There are additional signals you have to worry about. And it's important to understand that as people search for phrases related to car dealerships, most of those searches are going to automatically be localized, even if you don't include a phrase like a city or a metro or a neighborhood or even a phrase like near me or nearby. Like in this example, I only searched for used cars and it returns 
results that are next to my current location in the real world when I'm doing the search. The signals that influence local visibility are your website and the content on the site and how that content is optimized. And also other websites that have links on their sites that point to your site. And also your Google My Business listing. And as a little part of Google My Business, but also expanding out beyond that, customer reviews. So today I'm gonna talk about more advanced level kind of Jedi type SEO tactics. This is not the basic stuff. This is the advanced stuff that's really gonna help you. So let's talk about your website first. You need to make sure that you understand the implications of the page experience update that happened in July. There's a video here at this link that you can go watch. That's one of my weekly videos that talks about all of the factors that were added into Google's algorithm as part of this update. It's a really big update that's really changed how things work for a lot of businesses out there. And I've seen several car dealerships that were hurt by this update. So make sure you watch it so you understand everything that changed with the way that Google's looking at your site. You also need to make sure that your content is actually about your dealership and why you're awesome. Most car dealers are going to get their websites from one of four or five website providers, and they don't really have any interest or desire to update your content. It's not part of the packages. Unless you're buying digital marketing from them, you're going to get the boilerplate default content that they give to everybody. And you need to stand out from your competitors. And it's not the website provider's fault because it's not their responsibility. It's yours or your marketing provider. So make sure the content's actually about you and why you're awesome and why people should buy from you. Another thing that I hear dealers worry about a lot is duplicate content because they think there's a duplicate content penalty, but there's actually not a duplicate content penalty. What really happens in the real world, Google gives a benefit to unique content. It doesn't penalize you for having duplicate content, but that duplicate content doesn't really help you. So one way that I like to check to see if dealers have the unique content they should have or boilerplate generic stuff they got from their provider, I can use Google to check this. So I can copy a sentence off of, typically I'm gonna do it on the homepage or the About Us page. Copy a sentence or a sentence fragment or you know a sentence and a half. Make sure it doesn't have the city that the dealership is located in or the name of the dealership because that would make it unique. But copy that sentence fragment or sentence that doesn't have the dealership name or city and then search for it in Google inside of double quotes. Because when you search inside of the double quotes, it forces Google to return only sites that have that exact word combination on them in that order. It should only show one search result if your content is unique. If you see multiple sites that aren't you, then that means that website provider or that marketing provider has used that content on other dealership websites and that's bad for you. If you boil Google down to a simple concept, you wanna think of it like this. If you wanna show up as a search result for something that someone has typed in, you need a page of content on your website about that concept. This is where a lot of dealers get things wrong. They don't have a lot of content outside of the vehicle details pages on the site. And you have to start thinking if you want to show up as a search result, you need a page about that thing that you want to show up for. For instance, if you've got a service department, you want to have service content. A lot of dealerships complain they don't show up for oil changes or tire rotations or batteries and that's because they have one service page that has the hours listed and a form to book service, but they don't have a page about oil changes or tire rotations or batteries. So add that service content so you'll show up. And once you've written this amazing content, you've got to make sure you optimize it for Google and hold Google's hand and make it really clear what the content's about and where you're located. And this is where the little guys can run all over the big guys and just whoop their butts. So if you optimize well, you're going to outpace the guys that aren't doing SEO or the guys that aren't doing SEO well. And when we compare used car dealers to new car dealers, new car dealers can't optimize their entire site for used cars. They have to optimize for new cars and for service and for parts and other things. But as a used car dealer, you can optimize 100% of your content around being a used car dealer and typically kick everybody else to the curb. So you want to make sure when you're doing your optimization that you're using the keyword phrases that customers are using. You want to avoid the jargon that we tend to use in the automotive industry because we'll refer to things a certain way. And customers that 
don't know much about cars or haven't bought cars in a while won't necessarily use those terms. My favorite example is that dealers like to say that they sell pre-owned vehicles, but customers actually search for used cars. In fact, if we look at Google AdWords keyword data, we'll see that there's only about 2,900 searches a month for pre-owned vehicles, but there's 823,000 searches a month for used cars. So you want to make sure you're optimizing for the right phrases. And then you want to make sure that you're geo-optimizing and targeting your local area. Outside of the vehicle details pages on your site, every other page on the site should be optimized. So I'm going to walk you through the elements on the page that you should be optimizing. The first being the title tag. It's what populates your blue link when you show up as a search result in Google. And it's at the top of your browser window. It shows up in the little tab above where you type in the URL. So most humans don't pay too much attention to it, but it should have your targeted keyword phrase and your city and state information. Don't put your dealership name first. You're the only dealership name that, if anything, your dealership name should be at the end of the title tag. The next place that's important is the H1 heading. That's the big thick headline at the top of the page above all of your text. It should have the same targeted keyword phrase and also your city and state abbreviation and be a little bit more conversationally written than the title tag. And then obviously if you've got awesome content about your dealership and why you're great, that talks about the local area, you're probably not going to have to optimize too much here because you'll already have that. All of the platforms allow you to set customized URLs. So you should also make sure that your URL includes your targeted keyword phrase and city and state. So for example, most inventory pages are going to be dealership.com slash search inventory or dealership.com slash search used or dealership.com slash pre-owned inventory, all one word. You'd be much better off with dealership.com slash used dash cars dash Dallas dash TX. So make it more human friendly and Google friendly. Also, the alt text on your images is important to optimize. Back in the day, Google couldn't tell what was in an image. So alt text is code in that image embed code on the page that describes what's in the image. Well, Google can now tell what's in images with machine learning, but alt text is still part of the algorithm. And it's a great way to outpace your competitors that aren't doing anything with alt text. It's also important to pay attention to your meta description. This is behind the scenes code that humans don't see on the page, but when you show up as a search result in Google, the meta description is what displays those couple of sentences underneath your blue link when you show up as a search result. So think of it more like an advertisement. You wanna write something compelling so that people will see this is the answer to my question and you'll be more likely to get click-throughs from search results. Moving on, inbound links. Links from other websites pointed to your site are one of the most weighted factors in Google's algorithm. They're really, really important, but it's kind of tough to do. So most independent dealers and a lot of new car dealers and even a lot of automotive SEO providers don't really do anything with link building. Now, when you're thinking about the links that are pointed at your site, you don't really want to worry so much about the total number of links. You really need to concentrate on the total number of sites. So if you get 100 links from one site, that's not really that much better than getting a single link from that site. So worry more about how many unique websites point to you, not how many links you have in aggregate. You want to make sure you're getting links from local websites because we're looking at Google's local algorithm. So when you get links from local sites that point to your site, that backs up your local relevancy. If you need some ideas, I did a video that walks you through some really awesome ideas for local links. So go check that one out. And if you want to learn even more and get really advanced, I did an entire presentation about link building at a conference in Sydney, Australia a few years back. It's still super relevant, super up-to-date information, even though it's been a couple of years. So go check out the slides at that link right there. It's super awesome. We want to talk a little bit about customer reviews too, because obviously they're important to humans, but they're weighted in Google's algorithm as well. So you wanna make sure you've got a good process in place. It's not a big deal if you don't have a perfect review score. A lot of research has been done that shows that businesses that have a perfect review score, people don't necessarily trust that those are legitimate reviews. A couple of bad reviews here and there make you look more real. So watch this video if you have any questions there. But you wanna make sure you've got a proactive process and you make it easy for customers to leave a review and you ask every customer for a review. So definitely watch this video. It explains how you should have a page on your site that you send customers to that thanks them for their business and gives them options for where to leave reviews and sends them directly to those sites so it's easier for customers to leave those reviews. And you wanna make sure you're answering every review that comes in, not just the bad reviews, but the good reviews. And here's a killer tip. If a customer leaves a review, 
with keywords in it that you're trying to rank for, you're more likely to rank for those keywords. So if you're trying to show up for used cars in your city and a review mentions used cars or used car, you're going to be more likely to show up. Now, you can't really tell people what to write because that's against the rules and potentially maybe against the law. But you can use a Jedi mind trick that I share in this video where you let people know on that page that links to your review sites that helpful reviews offer specific tips and tricks. And then you ask a few questions that they could answer as they write the review. And then you kind of guide them subliminally to include certain things in that review. It's a really tricky kind of thing to do, but it works really well. So definitely go watch this video. And if you have a negative review and you want that review to be removed, a lot of times maybe it's somebody that you don't even have in your system and you don't even know that you ever even talked to them. So it's potentially a fake review. The bad news is Google's probably not going to remove it just because you said they're not a customer. Google's only going to remove a review if it violates the restricted content policy, which I link to right there if you're interested in reading. But basically, the review has to explicitly state that that person didn't actually do any business with you or even talk to you. They have to say, oh, well, my friend went there and did this or something like that. Or if it explicitly states that the person leaving the review is an employee or was a past employee, then Google will remove it. But the main thing that a lot of dealers want to get rid of are those pesky one-star reviews that don't have any text and Google's flat out just not going to remove those ever. So if you get one of those bad reviews, your best option is to leave a strategic response that says, hey, you know, we looked through our records. We don't have any record of ever talking to you. We talked to the person that you mentioned. They don't know that they ever talked to you. I don't know why you left the review with a fake name, but if you'd like to let us know who you are, we'd be happy to make the situation better, which then automatically makes anyone reading that review in the future think that it's a fake review. And so that review won't really hurt you. So let's finish up with a couple of tips about Google My Business. Your Google My Business listing is the first impression that you make with new customers. The people that used to go to your site to get your phone number to call you or get your address to come see you or to see pictures or read reviews or even ask questions or read frequently asked questions, they can do all of that in Google My Business now on the search results without ever going to your site. So you've got to make a great first impression. So you want to make sure you're filling out all of the correct categories. There are 10 possible category slots and there are more than 10 categories that apply to car dealers. So I made a video there that walks you through how to choose the correct categories for your listings. And if you want to check out your competitor competitors categories, the things that your competitors have chosen, so you can see if that might be influencing how they're ranking in search results. There's a really cool trick that I talk about in one of my past videos, but you have to dig through code. So now I like to suggest using the GMB spy Chrome plugin that was actually created by George Nenny, uh, a buddy of mine. You guys probably know him. He's been in automotive for forever. Uh, I made a short link that goes right to the Google Chrome store so you can download that. It's a really handy uh, thing to have installed on Chrome so you can check out your competitors. If you've got a competitor who's cheating by maybe adding extra keywords to his business name or outright spamming and saying he's open 24 hours a day or has moved his map pin to try to show up somewhere else, you can use the suggest and edit feature on their Google My Business platform. And then in the suggested edit, list what the actual hours are, actual business name should be. You can also use Google's business redressal form at that URL right there to report a business and trigger a manual review of the information that is listed on Google for that business. You can also go post on the Google My Business community forum. This is a great place to go if you have any problems with your own Google My Business listing as well, or if you've got problems with nesting departments or anything like that. Google support is typically uh, pretty backed up and slow, but during COVID right now, it's, it's very backed up and slow. So go to the forum, create a post on the forum with as much detail as possible about your issue, and one of the product expert volunteers there will escalate you and help you get a solution. I know a lot of times I hear from dealerships that the information about the dealership is just automatically changing. The hours will change and they'll go back and change into what they should be. And a day later, it changes back or the phone number or anything like that. Typically, it's because you have a third party application that has been given access to your Google My Business and it's sending a feed and writing outdated information onto your profile on a regular basis. So if you go to this URL right here, you'll see if there's a, a system like Moz Local or 
uh, even Yext that maybe you gave access to your listing in the past and forgot to turn that feed off so it's still going. Also, it could potentially be a past vendor that was using one of those systems and didn't cancel you out of the system. So use this link to find that. You can also check your user list to see if maybe someone that used to work there that shouldn't have access anymore still has access, or maybe it's somebody that works there that has access and might be inadvertently changing things. In rare cases, it could be because someone in the area suggested an edit, but typically suggested edits won't stick automatically unless there's easy to see proof on your website that the information on your site is correct, but what was listed on Google My Business is wrong. Most of the time, you won't be able to have competitors come in and change your hours or your name to hurt you maliciously. You wanna make sure you're using Google Posts. They're basically free ads and they're really awesome. I did an entire Whiteboard Friday video for Moz all about Google Posts. So you can go check it out on the Moz blog right there. It's about 15 minutes of really in-depth information. You also wanna make sure that you're checking out the questions and answers feature that uh, it actually got added about two years ago, but a lot of businesses don't know that it's there anymore. So I created an entire video about that because I knew I wouldn't have enough time to go over it in today's presentation. Now, I know I went through a lot. Hopefully your brains aren't hurting. I don't wanna explode anybody's brain because I shared too much too quickly. And if you haven't seen scanners in the past, his brain actually does explode. But anyway, the truth is out there about how to get better visibility in local searches. And now you've been given the key to success. So hopefully you can break out of your shell and do better marketing in the future so that your dealership or your business will be able to live long and prosper. So that was how to be an SEO Jedi and win on Google. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Greg Gifford. There's my email address. If you have any questions, feel free to email me anytime. I've got an open policy. I will always answer questions that anyone has for me. And if you want to get the slides from me, I'm happy to send them to you, or you can just take a screen capture of this. It's got all of the movies in order of release. So you've got a cool list of movies to watch later. Thanks so much. Thanks for sticking around to watch the whole presentation. That is definitely all the time we've got for this week. So you know what that means. Put your hand on the screen right here. We totally just high-fived because you learned something awesome. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week for another episode of Local Search Tuesdays.